See, I, I know what you're thinking. Why do we have to talk about the negative guys? Aren't you negative Stay enough positive. for us? Stay positive? Man, come on. Now, make sure that you write and read things correctly. This guy is not the cube root of x, is he? No. <coughs> it's, negative three root. it's negative 3 times the square root of x, which means all of those key values are now being multiplied times negative 3. Right? And it will be a stretch. We talked about this guy. Not only is he upside down, but he will be a stretch. Now, this is only a coincidence that this, the ones we had in the last example, they were both compressions and they were both positive. It's, and these guys are both negative and both stretches. It's a coincidence, all right? So you're saying all negative ones are stretches? <laughs> I said it's a coincidence. Don't, don't do that. You're, this yeah. is being recorded. Not, definitely not for posterity. <laughs> Get your key points. I have no time for your games. That's your original square root guy, but what am I doing with this? So look at your key points right here. 1, 4, and 9. What's the square root of 1? Am I going to put my point here? No. My point does not go here because I have to multiply it times the negative 3. Well, I already did the negative because I knew it was going down, but multiply times 3, so I'm down here at 3. The square root of 4 is 2. I don't put a point there. So multiply times 3, so 2, 4, 6. What's the square root of 9? But again, you're multiplying times 3, so it's a stretch, and you're going to be down here. See, I'm going to dash this guy for you so you see what I'm talking about. This dashed guy is negative the square root of x. The blue dashed guy is the original square root of x. But now that I've got negative 3 square roots of x, that's why I'm going to be a lot steeper. And so I'm just going to Connect the dots like that. What do you think? Awesome. awesome. Stupendous. Here's the other example that we had talked about. Negative 2 times the absolute value of x. Again, we already know our key shape right here. I said that this guy is going to open down, but he's not moving up, down, left, or right. But he's got this negative 2 right here, so you can treat that like a slope only because you have straight pieces here. <coughs> so that means you're doing what? Down 2 over 1, down 2 over 1, and so on. Get these key points. And you connect the dots. Now, just so you see how it would compare to a negative absolute value of x, negative absolute value of x would be this dashed orange line right here. So this is negative the absolute value of x. This is negative 2 absolute value of x. And this guy is just your default. absolute value of x. You guys see the difference there? If I'd made this guy negative one half, what would it be doing? It'd be opening down, but it would be not as steep, right? If I had the slope here as a positive five, positive five, what would I be doing? Right, if it were positive five, like here's positive one, a positive five would make it go even steeper. Right? I really wish I had some toothpicks. I know that's a weird thing to say. Look at your original graphs, or your computer graphs. Does that match up? Yep. 
so amazing. Is that starting at zero minus one half? Well, I think there are some limitations with the, the way this guy graphs. But it would start at zero, right? Exactly, because the square root of zero is, is zero. Yeah. Th just the limitations of the graphing utility here, it has a hard time when, you, when things get too vertical. Um, and that's one of the things you find out here. The slope of this guy, you can actually find that out using calculus. And you would find that as the, as your tangent lines get closer to this point right here, the slope of the tangent line approaches undefined. It, 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 it starts to approach 1 over 0, and so it would be undefined right here. Yay, calculus. <laughs>